got our love from heaven, never gonna fade away. I got a love that's made for me by the ancient day. And I got a love that's greater than anything ever made before. I got a love. I got a love from heaven, I got a love that's given to me, from the ancient of days, I got a love that's greater than anything ever made before, I got a love that's greater than anything ever created. I got a love from heaven and given to me as a gift. It's never gonna fade away. It belongs to the ancient of days. Oh, I got a love from heaven. It's greater than anything ever made. I got a love from heaven. It's greater than anything ever created. I got a love greater than anything ever made before. I got a love that's greater than anything ever created. I've got a love from heaven that's made for me from Jesus. Oh, I've got a love that will never fade, given to me by the ancient of days. I got a love that's greater ever made before I got a love that's greater than anything ever created I got a love from heaven given to me by Jesus I got a love that'll never fade made by the ancient of days I got a love from this greater Anything ever made before? I got a love that's greater than anything ever created. I got a love from heaven given to me by Jesus. I got a love that will never fade, made by the ancient of days. So oh, I got a love from heaven given to me by Jesus. Jesus. I got a love that will never fade, made by the ancient of days. Oh, I got a love that's greater than anything ever made before. I got a love that's greater than anything ever created. I got a love from heaven given to me by Jesus. I got a love that will never fade, made by the ancient of days. Love from heaven, given to me by Jesus. By the ancient of days. Oh, I've got a love from heaven, greater than anything made before. I got a love. Here we go. I got a love that's greater than anything ever made before. I got a love that's greater. I got a love that's greater than anything ever created. Oh, I've got a love from heaven. I got a love from Jesus. I got a love that will never fade, made by the ancient of days. I have a love that's greater than anything ever made before. I got a love that's greater than anything ever created. I've got a love from heaven made for me by Jesus. I got a love that will never fade and given by the ancient days. I've got a love that's greater than anything that 
ever created before. I got a love that's greater than anything ever created. And I got a love from heaven. I've got a love from Jesus. I've got a love that never fades. Made by the ancient days. I got a love that's greater. I've got a love that's greater than anything ever made before. I've got a love that's greater than anything, than anything ever created. And I've got a love from heaven made for me by Jesus. I've got a love that will never fade, given by the ancient days. Oh, I've got a love that's greater than anything ever made before. Oh, I've got a love that's greater than anything ever created. And I've got a love from heaven made for me by Jesus. Oh, I've got a love that will never fade, given by the ancient days. Uh, Oh, I've got a love that's greater than anything ever made before. Oh, I've got a love that's greater than anything ever created. And I've got a love from heaven made for me by Jesus. Oh, I've got a love that will never fade. A gift from the ancient days. Oh, I've got a love. That's greater than anything ever made before. Oh, I've got a love that's greater than anything ever created. Oh, I've got a love from heaven, oh, made for me by Jesus. Oh, I've got a love that will never fade. A gift from the angel.
verse. Hey, leave it up, man. Leave it up. Leave it up. We don't know what we're we're just writing. The, we're just singing a song. And then gotta have to go back to the verse. Ha. We're, we're gonna call that the course, okay? Yeah, we're gonna call the other part of the verse. sing this song again, just in case. We gotta do it one more time. Because it's just hallelujah. Ha ha ha. I've got a love that's greater than anything ever made before. I got a love that's greater than anything ever created. I got a love from heaven. get sung some more.
Father, we praise your holy name. We thank you for this love, oh God. <laughs> we thank you for this love, Lord. We thank you for this love, Lord. We thank you for this love, Lord. We thank you for this love, Father. This gift from heaven. Dwelling in this love, living in this love, walking in this love, oh this love, oh what love, yeah this love, love of God, oh this love, this great love, hallelujah for the love, living in the love, walking in the love, such great love, oh thank you for the <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, just let's just sing this first part one more time. I got a love that's greater than anything ever made before. I got a love that's greater than anything ever created. And I got a love from Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for your love. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for your love. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your love. Sing the chorus. Sing the verse. It's greater. This unspeakable, amazing love. Made for me by 
Jesus. I've got a love that'll never fade, a gift from the ancient of days. It's the realm where miracles are found, where the fullness of God is received. It's a simple way, a holy way, a living way that God has made. Uh, can't you see this life? Won't you know? And believe this love, dwelling in this love, this great, great love. Thank you for this love, this miracle realm, this glorious love. I've got a love that's greater than anything ever made before. And I've got a love that's greater than anything ever created. I've got a love from heaven made for me by Jesus. I've got a love that will never fade. A gift from the ancient of days. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. King Rama Manjesi Televevran. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> oh, mighty God. Oh, mighty God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for your goodness. <laughs> Thank you, God. <laughs> For your love and kindness. <laughs> Thank you, God. Thank you, Father, for your great miracles. God. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. 
I've got a love that's greater than anything ever made before. I've got a love that's greater than anything ever created. I've got a love from heaven made for me by Jesus. I've got a love that will never fade, a gift from the ancient of days. I've got a love that's greater than anything ever made before. I've got a love that's greater than anything ever created. I've got a love from heaven made for me by Jesus. I've got a love that will never fade. A gift from the ancient of days. Hallelujah. <laughs> Satana kara se beke ripasata ripasoto mandem rangea mambranda jese robota ekirida mondande i presea manger ripekesto du lo bondosto membre me mengese me mengene mongese pero nada menengere sur non berdera monengere sera monde beli kana mangese mambre menene bese ekese ture hallelujah Thank you, Father, for the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father, for your wondrous love. Yes, Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, mighty God. <laughs> Thank you, mighty God. Father, we, we praise you. Lord, we lift up our voice in praise and thanksgiving unto your wonderful and glorious name. Thank you, living God. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Hallelujah. Zekaraman Jesi kita ramanzo rotoya. Zegya raman geshe kiata yeleme en Jesisu. Hallelujah. Halabor rabasata re de bevre. Halabir rasoto rikasa re ne eshe. Ke kanamo ke keri na jaya potohoya. Mama nevreyo. Oh, mighty God. All praise belongs to you, Lord. Oh, praise belongs to you, Father. <laughs> oh, praise belongs to you, Lord. Father, we give thanks unto you, Lord. We give thanks unto you, Father, for all your wondrous works, for your so great of salvation. Hallelujah. 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 Sasataya Bayo, Alleluia, Saki Prabayo, Roman Sapayo, Alleluia, Woohoo! Ha ha ha! Kelsa Ribayo, Romana, Sikaya Prebeo, Punaya, Sikaya Basadeo, Mambande, Sukari Sabaya Bayo, Roman Saya. Sutorisea becana eche o mamanea si. Habasi ateo pramagacho yo po nakaya patea si. Leo po. Baya leo po. Baya leo po sotorina. Saya po finanje kayo so polo. Biate ribahala. Pasa rabecano. Mambrefeo pai. Mambrefeo para si prochia. Ma brafeo porosito yoro. Ma ya prisa yoro poco risaya. Ha 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 ha. Hallelujah. Woohoo! Woohoo! Ha 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 ha. Woohoo! Ma ma la sa breve. Ma breve bekeya. Shout to the Lord. With the voice of triumph. Ha 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 ha. Hallelujah. Ha ha ha. Robo. 
tira sa deja lo povra. Mila sa pravejo koto jarama. Pia brames, pia ramej antojo. Pia rama sari manea. Sia rama kina ngato jo po. Lord Jesus, we praise you, Lord. Lord Jesus, we bless and praise your holy name. Blessed is your holy name, living God. Hallelujah. Blessed. Woohoo! <laughs> ha! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Ha 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 ha! Some of you might be standing on the earth right now. I'm in heaven. We invite you. Come on up. It's really good up here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed is your glorious name. Kisoto Kipraha. Sikoto Sikari Nahaha. Oh, Ramabari Baya Brobo. You Sharebea. Oh, Sitari Dano Boya. Kisatea lo mamboso to yo. Makea, makea se ke karekeo. Sateo boso to rama mandea. Du robo po ni prebe. Siri bataso to gorusari rama mandeo. Hallelujah. Zutaya la monje pribi piato rama seo promo mandeo pahaila. <laughs> Blessed is your name, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Lord Jesus, we praise you. Lord, we magnify you. We thank you for your great love. We thank you for your great salvation. We thank you for your mighty works in the midst of your people. We thank you, Father, that you open up our hearts and give us an understanding that we might know you. <laughs> And your only begotten son. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed is the name of the Lord Jesus. Blessed is the name of the Lord Jesus. Let his praise fill this whole earth. Let his praise fill your mouth. Let his praise fill your heart. Suturi mazeo prane kisitero. Blood remande esipaya. Hava meteo pamaneke. Haya baba katoya la mancha panaitea. Nana nemberi si teris. Maya tu yurisu. Ha ha. Maya tera di yusu hubre. Ha 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 ha. Jesus, Lord Jesus, we worship you. We praise you. <laughs> we magnify your holy name, Lord. We magnify your holy name, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed. Blessed is that wonderful name, Lord God Almighty. We worship you. Living God, we praise your holy name. We thank you for your miracles. We thank you for your signs and wonders in the earth, Lord. We thank you, Father, for your great mercy. We thank you, Lord, for your great love. Come on, just go ahead. Don't hold back on my account. Just bust right on through. Bust right on through. Just press right on in and touch him. Just, just press right on in. If you gotta, if you gotta move, move things out of the way, if you gotta crawl underneath like the woman with the issue of blood, whatever it takes, go ahead and get on in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ha <laughs> Just go ahead and press into that realm of heaven where Christ Jesus can be seen, where you can touch him and he can touch you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Aleluia! Mare de mais, revista aí o rosto da Rige. Zeira da Dani de Barroso. Mala na Mahisha na Mahila ha. Havia Romo José. Aleluia! Lord Jesus. Aleluia! Lord Jesus, you're so wonderful. <laughs> Woo you're so wonderful. You're so glorious, oh God. So mighty, so worthy of all praise. Lord, we so worthy of all obedience and servitude. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah! 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 Hallelujah. <laughs> Our glory and honor unto your name, Lord Jesus. All power and might and dominion unto you. Lord Jesus, <laughs> Lord Jesus, let your glory fill this earth. Let your power and might be made known to every single human being. Every man, every woman, every boy, every girl. <laughs> every person upon this earth, oh God, let your light shine bright, we pray. Let it man in there. Hallelujah. Ha ha. Hallelujah. Ha 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 ha. Hallelujah. Ha re man de sete de de fekia. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praba ribe de biki shombro bom rebeya. Mangene mena e maya de mena. Mana manea monoku baromosa te ishekia tu huso. Aya se abarona ma eshe erebo usheba etehe. Lere mangisha mambo oko ina ala. Hallelujah. 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 Hari shaya ekina anjea ika ine eche inobundo yi si baaya rababane epera. Jesus o zezi ata ike eshe e kamakeka ni do koto romosoto yina asea o yishi arena and the epoto yisha aki mane ekela o chora ma ishe bono mongote ala mangeshe maya kada achata ila bakoso otore ne injala bakise pe ete Hallelujah 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 Come on dosete ikea Come here. Come, come here. I'm praying for you. Come. Come here. Yeah, come. Come. Yes, you come. Come pray for you. Come. I just I want to pray for you back there in case you fell out on the concrete. The sickness, the sickness and the disease that's been in your life is going to depart out of your body tonight in Jesus' name. So lift your hands towards heaven. I'll say from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet in Jesus' name. I curse every unholy thing to come off your body now. It has to go. It has to go in the name of Jesus. It has to leave your body now. Now just listen. I just want you to receive. I do, this is to receive now. I want you to receive. The Lord wants to give you a brand new heart. How's that? Huh? Just, I just want you to receive now. Just relax. You don't need to be, no, no one's going to beat you up. No one's mad at you. Relax. The Lord's going to touch you now. The sickness and this disease is going to depart off your body. And I'm back here to take care of me. So a miracle right now tonight, a creative miracle for you. Here, I want you to sit right there. I want you to sit right there so I can stare at you. Okay? We get all, we get, 
you're, Vichar, you're holding up a picture. We're not, in, we're not in India. I know exactly how it works in the Hindu <laughs> temple. Is that right? But we got it. We got it. I got you. I understand. I understand exactly what you mean. Behold, the God sees. The living God sees. Asaketi yata. Yeah, I understand. I, I know the drill. I'm with you. I'm with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we call them into the kingdom right now. In Jesus' mighty name, I break every stronghold of darkness. Every mind-blinding spirit has to depart from off their life. Every stronghold of Satan, of hell, every claim of the powers of darkness, no more allowed to exist. I break the power of Hinduism and every false god in Jesus' name. Amen. I command light and healing, blessing. In Jesus' mighty name. Shikara shekaya shetuna. Hallelujah. Kuda singalangadeya. Lukona ne epe. Ha 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 I would encourage you to get rid of the sad, sad countenance now because there's no sad countenances in heaven nor before those who minister before the presence of the Lord or have the countenance of the king's seed. Hallelujah. You would notice that sadness is not actually something that you find in a uh, positive light in the scriptures. In fact, it says the redeemed of the Lord has returned and come a singing unto Zion and everlasting joy. Is upon their head, that means your face. <laughs> Sorrow and sadness fled away in terror. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. You can be seated. Somebody said it was gravity. No, it's not gravity. It's an oppressive environment. Uh, the God of this world, the spirit of disobedience would oppose every good thing that pertains to life and godliness but if you'll just stay over here in Christ Jesus he doesn't have a chance of messing with you hallelujah hallelujah ha 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 you know one of the one of the uh, feasts um, those of you've been reading through the Bible now I know you've broken you've broken the barrier I think most of you have probably broken the barrier of the old covenant now it's right here in the New Testament praise God amen <laughs> Hey, is this, your, is this your first time reading the Bible all the way through in 90 days? Come on, man. <laughs> got to find your threshold in the Word of God because everybody's got a bunch of imaginations. People are living more by imaginations than they're living by the Word of God, saying they're living by the Word of God. And the only way that's going to change is when you just get deep, I mean, just get, I mean, over, I mean, you get, I look, jump into the Word of God, swing, sink to the bottom and breathe. <laughs> okay, just get that deep, just get e immersed into the things of the Spirit. But, you know, one of the things that you'll find in Zechariah, Zechariah kind of gives us a good overview. He, Zechariah actually takes and ties together what was going on in the days of Ezekiel's, Ezekiel's day uh, and helps us to, to, to move it forward to the millennial reign of Christ. It, it, once you get skilled at understanding that, but one of the feasts that stands out in Zechariah is the Feast of Tabernacles. That's the one he's going to demand everybody to come up and keep as a memorial, as a testimony and that Feast of Tabernacles is when Jesus announced the baptism in the Holy Ghost. Did you know that? Did you know that Jesus, that's when Jesus announced the baptism in the Holy Ghost? In John chapter 7, verse 38 and 39, he said it was on the day of the Feast of Tabernacles. Now, if you, if you, want, a, if you want a good study, uh, just, you know, apart from your Bible study, you want a good study, start, uh, do a little study on the Feast of Tabernacles and go back into antiquity and look at the description of the Feast of Tabernacles all of the historians, all of the writers who were able to visit during that day, just prior to the time that Jesus came on the scene, they would, have say, they would have written about it being the most joyous celebration of life and ecstasy that existed on the planet. And that's what it was supposed to be. Feast of Tabernacles was when uh, there, was the, you know, there, there was the crying out for God to bring forth the water, to cause the water to spring up from the earth. They would take the palm branches of victory and strike the earth and call for the, the spirit of holiness to spring up, you know. And they'd cry out, uh, Isaiah 12, spring up, O well, you know. And they would go and draw water from the well of salvation with what? With joy. <laughs> Hallelujah. So the Lord had made it very clear that he didn't want anybody appearing before him, before him with a sad countenance. And so 
I hope that you get that better than giving an offering of money. I pray that you will give an offering of obedience. I pray that you will let your countenance be conformed in obedience to the word of God. And that which Father has asked. He's asked us to come and, and receive from him something that goes beyond that which can be contained within the, the human realm. And the, it just busts out into the heavenly. And all we have to do is just receive because the Holy Spirit isn't a mystery anymore. We're not mysteriously crying for the water to spring up from the earth. The Lord Jesus announced it to the woman at the well. You don't have to be, you know, any person that is, that is special or, or very unique. You haven't need, in other words, you don't need to have been a person who was born of a particular tribe and family and genealogy who learned how to, you know, read the Bible and pray in the holies of holies from the time you were born. Because Jesus went up to a woman who, was, who had been married five times and was living with a man who was not her husband, and he invited her to receive a gift that would cause the water to spring forth from the earth. Hallelujah. Harababa. He said that there would come a belly, there would come a, a, a bubble up in, in, in her innermost being out of her belly. And then, of course, on the Feast of Tabernacles, he takes it to a whole other level. As he begins to as he begins to introduce the Ruach Hakodosh, the Holy Spirit, as he begins to introduce the one, the very spirit of the living God who would come and live with us and dwell with us and 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 not only be with us alongside of us as he as he is right now, ha, pasi but be in me. You know, everybody who's talking about, oh, I, you know, I saw an angel. How, how about just gazing on the Holy Ghost? I mean, like, you know, I'm not really intrigued by an angels. I want to see Jesus. Yeah. I want to see Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I want to see Father. Hallelujah. Somebody said, you can't. Well, just tell Moses that he can't. Tell Abraham that he can't. Tell Enoch that he can't. Tell Ezekiel that he cannot. Ezekiel had a radical encounter with the Father, didn't he? He sure certainly did. Oh, that people would come to be immersed in the things that Father has given to us of the revelation of himself, which is first found in the word that has been given to us, written on the pages, and, and then further discovered in the word Christ Jesus. And of course, you know, ultimately right now, where we stand right now, all of these things are discovered for us and revealed to us and proclaimed to us in the word Christ Jesus. And what's the whole work of the Holy Spirit? It's to reveal Jesus, to make him known, to, sh to give to us an understanding of everything that he is and everything that he's about and everything that he, he is doing. That's why the Holy Spirit's constantly doing miracles to glorify Jesus. That's why he's doing signs and wonders and that's why he's doing gifts of healing and that's why he's doing prophecy hallelujah and that's halabosareneke shipaya that's why he's doing tongues interpretation of tongues hallelujah astake na monki ishiparaneya hallelujah hakana ekishi karane ikiboro no puto yariga aya shiko na ma ezekiti aya shiko na ma akadeya shiki atia lona mande la mangi shikaya hallelujah harama mankia i just encourage you Rather than pray for an hour a day, just practice being happy for an hour. <laughs> just had, just I know it's going to be tough for some of you. It's like you're going to have to get some help, you know, uh, and uh, hold up both sides of your face. No, you won't. Holy Spirit will come help you. That's why He's come. Hallelujah, Jesus. When they were doing this joyous display, and I'm telling you, man, if you've never watched the Haradim, work it up. I mean, they get because they got to, you know, it, they they got to kind of work it up, man. They start. They start pulling it all together with a, you know, diving, and then it gets, and then it starts getting really radical. But at any rate, if you've never seen that, when there's, when there's a display of joy for the Feast of Tabernacles, the dwelling in the booths, you know, um, it, it's really something to see. But God has taken us to a, a realm where that expression of, of, they understood the joy that was supposed, th that a person would experience in the presence of the Lord, because they hung, you know, there was a tradition of what, what Moses experienced. There was a tradition uh, of what, of course, the priest would experience when they would stand in the presence of the Lord. The, the tradition of what King David experienced when he was overwhelmed by the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. And he began to dance with all of his might. And, uh, you know, that wasn't just, that was a, dis a display of, of human passion. That was the anointing of the Holy Spirit. That was a, 
that was the working, the manifestation of the power of God. Listen, if you were to take the uh, cover off of that plug-in over there and just go ahead and grab both wires, the hot one and the, uh, you know, and, you know the, the black and the red, just hold them, you're going to get a jolt. Okay, you're going to feel something. And it's going to cause you to express something. It's going to be, ah! Something like that. Because you're going to get touched. You're going to get touched deeply. If I were to take you out in the parking lot, put your hand in the door, slam the door, okay? You're going to be touched deeply in, in your being. Well, a father is not esoteric. He's not mystical according to, as, as many have, orthopraxy. Not necessarily orthodoxy. Not basically what you might say you believe the Word of God says, but what you practice the Word of God as saying is actually far more important because to the Lord, the hearers are not justified. The hearers are not made righteous. It's the doers that are made righteous. And so those things that you give yourself over to, see, you're, you, you and I are called by God to yield our, our members, our being, our being, our body, our essence, who we are as servants into the Holy Spirit and just let Him do what He wants to do through us. And um, hallelujah, he's a master musician. He's going to, he's not going to play you. He's going to bring you to life. Hallelujah. He's going to, that's what, that's what Jesus has done for us. He's brought us to life. And, and the Lord said, just come and, you know, they're all getting all excited. They've got themselves all rejoicing and everybody's shouting for joy. And the people who can't laugh because they're sad, they're going, ha, 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 Everybody's looking happy. Even the people in pain. You know, ha, 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 ha. Everybody's trying to be happy no matter what their, their physical condition is. They're trying to shout and rejoice. And the Lord says, you really want to be happy if you really want the joy. Is anybody really thirsty, come and I'll give you the drink. And out of your belly shall flow the un inexhaustible expressions of the living God, of his passions, of his nature, of his glory, of his essence, of his being. Like rivers, it would be an expression, like rivers, like the convergence of rivers. I mean, I just want the church of the Lord Jesus Christ to have this in practice. I just want to see it somewhere. I mean, everybody sits around and reads their Bible, and everybody tells us how much they got the truth, and nobody else has got it. You better listen up here, sonny boy, because we over here. I want to see Jesus. I want to see the display of the divine power and glory of God that is revealed from Genesis chapter 1, 1 to Revelation 22, 21. I'm not interested in all the orthodoxy. Everybody's right in their own eyes, and everyone else is wrong, okay, or kind of wrong or kind of right, or whatever. It's time now. We just let the Holy Spirit come be in charge. We all just come press in. There's a great press. Right now, there's a, there's a press on in the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. This is a time to just step in and just say, Holy Spirit, I, you know, my, you know, I walked in tonight, and I heard David playing, and many times I can just, if somebody's playing a song, I can hear words, you know, and so... It's like, it's almost like an interpretation. It's the same way I hear the uh, interpretation of tongues. Those of you who are songwriters or musicians or poets, you, if, you've, if you've ever recognized that in your life where you heard a song and all of a sudden you just hear words for it, right? Or you see something, you just begin to hear words. That's the same way interpretation of tongues works. It's just at another level. It takes that creative realm and explodes it to a supernatural heavenly realm. So, you know, I just walked into the place and I heard, I could see the whole place was just filled with the voice of it, uh, you know. I've got to love this greater than, any, than anything that's ever been made before. I've got to love this greater than anything ever created. Hallelujah. I've got to love from heaven made for me by Jesus. I've got a love that will never fade, a gift from the ancient of days. Hallelujah. So I'm going to take that and copyright it. Go right on ahead. It's public domain. Belongs to the Holy Ghost. But if you, sell on, if you try to merchandise his stuff, you're in trouble. I wouldn't do that. Uh, it's not for sale. Everything that God has, not for sale. It's all free. Cost you everything, though. Does that sound like a paradox? Everything that God has is not for sale. Uh, it's all for free, but it'll cost you everything. I'm going to say that again. Everything that God has is not for sale. Uh, it's all for free, but it costs you everything. And oh, what, what a blessed privilege when we all of a sudden stand and gaze upon Him and recognize, wait a minute, time out. You're telling me that I get your life as long as I'm willing to lose mine, because it's not going to be exchanged, because he really doesn't want ours. In fact, he did, he took ours and killed it on the cross. <laughs> That's what he thought about ours. Here, give it here. We're going to put that thing to death and get past it once and for all. Amen. 
It is a blessing. Praise God, you know. <laughs> All we've got is we got the easy job. Just deny yourself. But I know that was a big one for you. Oh, because, oh, we've really fallen in love with ourselves. I mean, woo-hoo, man. You think about the money you spend on yourself uh, compared to God. The time you spend on yourself. How you lay yourself down at night and take yourself a rest for about whatever, many hours that is. No. I mean, it's not, there's nothing wrong with rest and sleep. Father appointed it. Praise God for it. It's good to have it, huh? Because, I mean, we just run so hard that... We, Ann and I usually, we just collapse in the bed. I mean, it's a, it's, it's a time of great thanksgiving. We are more, we give more thanks over being able to lay down than our food that we eat. We're like, oh, God, thank you, Father, that we have this bed. You know, I'm not having to sleep on the sidewalk tonight. I'm not having to sleep in Kawasuti tonight. Praise God. Kawasuti, Nepal is backwoods of, of the kingdom of Hinduism, and you, you can't really see the walls. Well, you can see the walls, but you can't see the paint of the walls because it has a very unique decor. It's solid, 100% genuine cockroach. You cannot touch any part of the wall without a bug. And so this, you're, you're hoping for the lizards to come on in and protect you through the night. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your goodness. How he's blessed us. How he's blessed us as a nation. You know, I was, I was listening to the, 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 the news yesterday, and I'm thinking, man, this sounds just like the book of Daniel. You know, it's Turkey's going to get involved. Saudi Arabia is going to get involved. Uh, Iraq is talking about getting involved, you know. Um, you know, Yemen, which has, you know, got a, a big role to play. Egypt saying that they're going to get involved. You know, it just everybody's wanting to get involved with what's being stirred in Syria. The ancient kingdom of Assyria, the Assyrians shall arise. And, and it's like, my goodness, I'm thinking, Father, this is really, I know, I be personally believe that this is just a shaking. This is another level of the forerunner, if you would. This thing it. Somebody said, is this it? No, it's not it. I don't believe it's it. it it's a forerunner. Because reality of it is, is when the big it comes, I'm gone. So you'll know when the big it comes, okay, is this it? Because what you can seek, you'll seek me out and shall not find me. <laughs> you'll seek me out to ask me, is this one it? And you will not be able to find me. Then you have your answer. Yes, it is it. But I'm going, hallelujah. I'm be kind of say, I tell you that. I'm being caught up to meet him in the air. Uh huh. I'm going to be caught up to meet him in the air. Praise God. Hallelujah. A lot of people don't have this hope just because they don't know the Word of God. And they study the Word of God, wrestle it to their own destruction because they try to intellectually approach the Word of God. You may intellectually approach molecular biology. You may intellectually approach physical chemistry, if you dare. You may intellectually approach, you know, mathematics, but you can't intellectually approach the Word of God. You'll wrestle it to your own destruction. It's hallelujah. It's just walking it right out with the Lord Jesus Christ and... You know, people that don't believe in the catching away, I've got 10 questions that they can't answer. And I'm happy to ask them anytime. There's 10 questions they can't answer, and it will prove to them. I don't, they, they don't have to, I don't have to be any, and they don't, I don't have to give any proofs. So I'll just ask questions, and they can't answer them. And, you know, the Lord told us he, he would give to us a wisdom. He would give to us a mouth and a wisdom, hallelujah, that no one would be able to find fault with, neither could anyone resist. Now, he was speaking of that with respect in the context of the last days, actually. He was speaking in the context of being brought before those who, the, the magistrates, the Supreme Court justices, the people who are going to decide what's right and what's wrong, whether you should live or whether you're, you should die. The Lord says, I'm going to give you, I'll give you a mouth. I will put my words in your mouth. I'll give you the ability to speak. I'll, I'll, un I'll unveil mysteries through your mouth that has been hid from the foundation of the world, world so to speak. You know, that's what he told Moses. He said, Moses, I'm going to give you a mouth to speak that nobody can resist. Look at Stephen, you know. He had a wisdom and he had a words to declare that no one could resist. You know, they went ahead and stoned him anyways, but his wisdom and, his, and, and, the, and the ability to enunciate what, was in the, what is in the heart and the mind of God was irresistible. You know, I, 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 think, it's, I think it's wonderful 
uh, let me just go back to the Word of God for a second. I think it's wonderful when you finish reading the Bible that you can sit down and say, I've just heard, I've just listened, or I've just read every single word that God the Father has thought important to declare to humanity. That is an amazing feeling. I have just read. You don't know half of it. You don't know a fraction of it, but you've just read every one. I mean, one of the things to try to do sometime is to actually read the Bible out loud. And you, out of your own mouth, announce every word that Father thought to be important to announce to humanity. I'm telling you, it's creative word. It's yoke-breaking word. It's life-giving word. It's power. It's uh, sharper than any two-edged sword. It's living. My, 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 my. It's spirit. Hallelujah. How many of you have already, already finished? You've already finished. You've gone through the words. Done. There's three of you broke it. I think, I think they disqualified you because you started early. You did it? Oh, well, then she's not disqualified. She's not disqualified. They were saying they had the gold. I heard somebody say, I got the gold. Another person said, I got the silver. I, I pray you'll find your threshold in God. I, I pray you find your threshold of prayer. I mean, a praying in the Holy Ghost till you can't stand anymore. You've been overwhelmed. I like it. I, 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 we just was recently, recently watching um, the Bible, and I like how they described when... Um, uh, Abraham fell out in the spirit. I mean, he got knocked out. You can see, you know, his eyes rolled back up to his head. He goes, bang, you know. That's really falling out in the Holy Ghost. If that's ever happened to you, you want that. I, that's happened to me. Just so, oh, where all your strength goes out of you, you, you couldn't get up. You, you, you couldn't get up if you, were, if you had to. There'd be no way. I want you to find that threshold in God. It's available for you. There's so many people don't access that realm. They just leave it. They just leave it. They're too, why? Because everybody's too occupied trying to have a breakthrough with something else. No, get a breakthrough in heaven. I'm telling you right now, you break through this realm, you'll break through the area in which faith functions. Hallelujah. What can you do with faith? <laughs> well, better question, what can you not do? <laughs> I mean, think about the gift of faith, the operation of faith. As soon as I heard that, who I'm going to go ahead and say it tonight. As soon as I heard the door, that the door to Cuba was open. The same thing that happened to me for Nepal. Bang, it happened to me with Cuba. We get it ready to go and fill the national stadium in Havana, Cuba. 55,000 people. We're going to jam pack it out this year. This year. I'm telling you. All of, I'm telling you. Listen to me. Listen to me. The Cubans have been praying for some, like, I don't know, what, 65, 70 years underground church. They've been praying, crying out to God. Behold the day of your visitation. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> and Father just set it up. He set it up in such a miraculous way because actually he started the ball rolling about five, six months ago. And it was like, you know, uh, prophecy was going down was on the level of, wait a minute, how is this even going to work? I mean, you can't advertise nothing. You, if you're going to do anything, it's got to be behind closed doors. And, and the word is going forth big giant massive stadium Havana come on in Castro sit on the platform all this kind of stuff and here it is we heard the Obama uh, you know Obama administration announced that they have removed the embargoes and you know the conservatives are going oh we've been betrayed and heaven shouting it's time for a nation to be released from its captivity amen, yes. amen. hallelujah <laughs> hallelujah it's a, it's amazing it is amazing what happens in a nation that has lived under that kind of oppression and, and, and to where that the church has had to live uh, underground and behind closed doors. When they all get to come out in mass like that, it's a boldness that, first of all, infuses the, the believer. It, it, it just it slams the unbeliever because they had no idea this was going on. So they get, kept, they get caught up in the glory of it. And then the government looks at it and says, we got to do something about this. This is huge. This is big. We're going to have to cooperate. And so, you know, we're just seeing it. These are the days. These are the days. I don't know how it's going to happen in Yemen, but it's going to happen. I know it's going to happen in Damascus, Syria. Praise the name of Jesus. It's going to happen in Benghazi, Libya. It's going to happen in, in um, Mecca, Saudi Arabia, Tehran, Iran, Baghdad, Iraq. It's going to happen in... Uh, Istanbul, Turkey. Of course, there are great things already happening in Istanbul, Turkey. And even one of the most strong, greater strongholds is Athens, Greece. Yeah, and you know, Tim, 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 uh, Tim Hall, I thought he was going to be here tonight, but he's going to be here next week. I just, my calendar's all whacked out. But Tim is just, Tim is shaking the Macedonian region. He's shaking 
the, the, uh, the areas of, of Serbia and uh, the Czech Republic. And the, the, those crusades are growing. And of course, he's just come back from Burma. I think they had 50,000 people in the crusade in Burma. So he'll be here on Wednesday night. He'll tell you. He'll let him tell you about it. If you know anybody who's sick, blind, deaf, dumb, stupid, whatever, bring them. <laughs> the Lord will heal them. Hallelujah. He'll heal them. He'll heal them. Praise God. Bring them to the meeting. Bring them to the meeting. Bring them to the meeting. And then, and then, and then just fill them up with faith because, you know, I come from the old Pentecost. I come from the old Pentecostal movement. And the old Pentecostal movement, church went on for 12, 14, 16, 18, you know, weeks. And uh, it was every day, every, every service, uh, service every day, every night. And then, of course, it was, it, it was the summertime. You know, it went camp meetings. My goodness, you just didn't go out of church. You just stayed in church. You just, you was either you knocked out under the Holy Ghost between meetings, you know, and those were three or four times a day. That's old Pentecost. People don't really know about that. They've just basically genuflexed their self through the program. And... Uh, you know, just real short meetings, real short meetings. Just there are people come here and they're absolutely, they're just, they're just shocked. They're just like, we went for four hours. And I'm like, we got out early. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I feel like almost like, you know, there just wasn't a move of God. But at any rate, hallelujah. Paki nasate epea. These are days of great. A great exploits in the kingdom of God. I'm so excited because all I've got to do, I don't have to, you, you and I, we don't have to, we don't have to try to do nothing or try to create anything or try to make anything happen. Huh? I mean, out there on the golf course, somebody trying to make it happen. It's all arms, man. It's pathetic looking. You know what I'm saying? It's the same thing in the, in the blowing the spirit. We don't have to try to make anything. We don't have to try to make anything happen. We don't have to try to make anything happen. Hallelujah. <laughs> all we got to do is just stand here and just rejoice in him just love on him just be blessed for this great love wherewith he's loved us and if 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 all we if all maybe all we maybe the lord chooses just to have us praise and and pray and and proclaim and just live joyfully and live full of the holy ghost i mean there's not a greater light that could shine than that there's not a greater blessing to pastors you imagine having joyful people in churches there wouldn't be that many pastors leaving the ministry I mean, there's so many pastors leaving the ministry because they have to look at sad, sick, and sorrowful people. Yeah, no, no I'm not kidding you. It's worse than being a dentist. It is actually worse. <laughs> it's worse than being a dentist. There's statistics on this. It's worse than being a dentist. And if it wasn't for Jesus, the suicide rate would be highest among pastors. Because <laughs> everybody's bringing their problems to the Lord. <laughs> and you're not supposed to. You're supposed to cast your cares on him. They cast your worries on him. And they have no problems. I mean, let cast your care. I say, I cast all my cares upon you. I say, I lay all of my burdens down at your feet. Now you don't have them no more. Ha, 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 ha. Oh, that could just happen. I would, I would say that was measurable revival. I would actually classify that as a great awakening. I would put that. I would put that. I, I, my Father, please, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Maybe that's what the Lord asked you to do. That's good, man. I'm telling you. That's all I want. That's all I, all I do. I'm ready for heaven. I'm ready for heaven. I want to go now. I'm now. If it was possible to make that one happen, I'm out of here. And you know, come on. This is all about Jesus. It's all about it's all about relationship with him. It's all about knowing him. If people want to make it all about, you know, being successful in ministry and doing all these things. Look, God's got the most important thing that he wants you to do is he wants you to do the fruits of the spirit. He wants you to do obedience. In re, with, within the framework of relationship, in other words, he wants you to do love. He's given to us a love. He says, this is the new commandment I'm giving you. I want you to love each other with the same love that I'm loving you. Wow. No one of us, not a one of us have the capacity to do that. We have to learn the entrance of it, the access to it, the way they're up. The Holy Ghost is, he's come to show us. But you've got to release your emotions. 
You got to release your passions. You got to release your cares and your interests. You got to release, release those things that are you holding on to that are burdening you and troubling you, that's upset you. That maybe some, for some people it's unforgiveness in their life and they just hold it. It's like they, uh, uh. <laughs> and for me, it's, I, it really is on that level. I can see, I, for me, you know, the Lord gives us the discerning of spirit. I think one of the most beautiful gifts is discerning of spirits. But you've got to be, you be baptized in love to handle it. Because otherwise you want to run out the door. <laughs> you see something going on in somebody's life, you know, that it just, it, you know, it's all covered up. Because people, have, can, people can put on a great show. People have a great act. We can, we're, we're professional actors, all of us. <laughs> it's just some of us haven't been discovered yet. <laughs> we're all great actors. <laughs> Uh, but to get the discerning of spirits causes that to just, you know, just comes popping out of you, you know. You just see it. It's, it's revealed. And then, you know, in the love of God, Father's love is so there that he, Christ died for us when we were without strength. That's not found in the realms of men. When th that promotes a, 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 a frenzy feeding in the realm of men. Men see weakness and they, you know, they take advantage of it. They, they pounce on it. Huh? like a lion or a leper, a lamb. You with me? The Father, He sees us in our weakness. He sees us without strength, and His compassion is moved towards us. Huh? So that Christ, commended, God committed His love towards us, that when we were without strength, He died for the ungodly to deliver us. He's an amazing God. Hey, I've got a love that's greater than anything that's ever been made before. i got a love that's greater than anything that's ever been created. You know, Papa's, he's, he, he, what has he done for us? He's filled us up with this love. I want you to learn your capacity in God. You've got a greater capacity, that, capacity than you've ever discovered. You've never really pushed it. You've never really tapped in to everything that is there. If you went training to, like let's just say you started training to, to swim or training to run, you know, if you kept giving yourself to that, you would discover, my goodness, you've got more speed than you thought you ever had. You have more agility, more ability than you thought you ever had. It can just be developed. My, if we give ourselves over to the Holy Spirit and we begin to make Him master and we let Jesus Christ be ruler and we now are willing to come under the authority of the Word of God, everything about our life takes on a whole new dimension. Now we're discovering thresholds in the glory where we we begin in the de la batalla. We begin to go over to this realm by the city of Alamo, by the Spirit, which is entire, it is a transition, it is a translation. Now listen to me. It's a transcendency. <laughs> Whatever other T words you want me to come up with. It, it, it just takes us into another realm of yieldedness. The God, the Holy Ghost is our teacher. He's come to lead us. He's come to guide us. He's come to show us how to do this. He's come to show us how to walk in the mind of Christ, how to put on the realms of God's divine excellence of character, which is what we describe at, when we describe the fruits of the Spirit, which I've counted 26 of them in the New Testament. But, you know, it's like love and joy and peace and long-suffering and gentleness and, and, and kindness and goodness and faith and meekness and temperance and godliness and boldness and assurance and confidence and mercy and forgiveness and wow and you be i mean just think about your what is your capacity what is the what is the maximum amount of goodness you've ever experienced in god and can you access that when you desire is it available? Is all the fullness of God available or not? Have, have, we, have, we, have all of us received of His fullness or not? Is the Word of God relevant to us? Is it a reality? Has it, has, it, has it plunged us into the realms of faith? Has it activated, has it activated faith within our life to where that we can lay hold on it and begin to have it manifest in our life? Can you get, can you get full of joy any time you want? Can you get... Can you get full of love anytime you want? And could you stay full of joy all the time and full of love all the time? Could you, could you, could you stay filled with the Spirit? Did you know it was God's cure for a generation? God said, this is how you redeem the time. God's cure for now. People look at gross darkness. 
you know, over the land. He, they look at the darkness over the land, gross darkness over the people. The Lord says, no problem. Don't worry. He says, rise and shine. He says, rise. Stand up. Stand up. And, 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 and begin to shine with the glory of God. Rise. Rise up. Stand up for your glory has come. Where did my glory come from? John 17, 22, Jesus said, Father, the glory you gave me, I've given it to them. So that they could be one just like we're one. And he describes that. Because I hear preachers just go off on a tangent. Just, just, uh-oh. You know, just a tangent, you know. Where you wonder, we, 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 we maybe got some, I'm not going to get into that. But at any rate, <laughs> he says, that you'd be one just like we're one. And he makes it very specific. Father, as you are in me, I'm in them. He would try to be one with each other. You know, we're not one with each other. We're one with him. And in being one with him and in that finding and discovering that oneness with him, that all, there's where we are immediately, automatically, by default, one with each other. That's where we have fellowship. It's a oneness fellowship. It's not I like you today and hate you tomorrow and then like you again the next day. You know, I'm upset with so-and-so. You're upset by what? By what right? Who's qualified you and given you the, the authority to be upset at somebody? Huh? Where did you gain that kind or that level of perfection to be upset with someone, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> over something that they did wrong? Give me a break. God didn't call you to do that. You know, people are practicing the, their capacity for hate, their capacity for sorrow, their capacity for lust, their capacity for iniquity. Look, God wants us to come over here and begin to learn about a whole nother realm. I mean, people, this is the best thing that's ever been found. It, 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 it's pleasures forevermore. It's joy unspeakable and full of glory. It truly, truly is. Peace that passes understanding. It's all ours. It's fellowship with God. It's Him living in us and us living in Him. Ha, ha. It's coming to know a capacity that Jesus says, if you'll come, he says, if you'll come and dwell in me and my words dwell in you, if you'll come and just live with me, just say, you want to be with me. Lord Jesus, I want to be with you. Lord, I'm walking with you today. And all the things that I'm going to do, I'm walking with you today. And, and we allow his word to dwell in us. And really, by and large, one can't happen without the other. If one's happening, the other's happening. He said, then the relationship will be at a, at a level that whatever you ask, it will happen. Whatever I ask, because God's Father is going to do it. Hallelujah. What is it that you would like to ask Father? I've, Father's, you know, there's times that the Lord has moved me to get in my car and go and drive to someone's house and call them up, make an appointment on the fly. Hey, I'm coming over to your house. Do you have an, can I make an appointment or whatever, you know, however that worked out. And he used to say, when you get there, just ask them. Whatever they want, I'll do it. This is a beautiful thing. I want that. There was a period in my life where I was just, you know, the Lord just had me doing that with certain, in certain situations. And I love that. And, uh, you know, I, I, I know that I'm, I'm going to go to a, a total, another di dimension of that season. But I walked into a woman's, uh, uh, to a couple's apartment and, um, I believe they live in Japan now, and, um, you know, sh she's Japanese, and she, you know, they really are, they really put it all together, you know, the tea and the hoe works, and, um, you know, the slippers when you come in the door, everything's all prepared, and I said, I looked at her, she's bringing me the tea, and I looked at her, I said, what do you want? Anything you want? You can have it right now. She just stops. She was stunned. She's sitting there looking at me, and she says, do you have any idea what you're saying? I said, Yeah. It's really simple. Anything you want, you can have right now. She said, well, I want a child. Child's yours. She said, well, that's like saying that an arm is going to grow out my back. I said, well, I certainly wouldn't want that. <laughs> because what I didn't know is she had no female organ. It had all been removed. Everything, the uterus, everything is all gone. They have four kids last time I heard. You know, and when you think about the reality, it just, it, you know, I'm not, it, this isn't self-serving. I'm just talking to you about the reality of God. All I am is a spokesman. All I am is get to be a mouthpiece. Gift of faith comes on me. I get to go declare something by the Holy Ghost, and Father does it, and it's beautiful. <laughs> Hallelujah. I mean, but this reality, it just, it just makes it so apparent that there is a place of walking out with Father that whatever we ask Him, we can have, He'll do it. 
Huh? But you know, a part of that is a big reciprocation that whatever he asks us, we will do it. And he's asked us some, he's asked us some serious things that are really about relationship. There aren't about all these other religious things that you would get, you know, out of 33 million gods with the Hindus. And I can go down the list of religious activities or all the mitzvah you'd have to do if you were a Jew to try to mystically gain right to, you know, have one step closer to the possibility of being accepted into the, to the, to the room with the Lord kind of thing, you know. And all the, uh, you know, just give. Here. Father says, I love you. Here, I'm going to give it to you. It's going to leg up. <laughs> it's, it, it's, it's our whole being's been brought into fellowship with them. And we don't really know how to enjoy that. I mean, why? Circumstances that are around us. Situations that are around us. We allow them to oppress us and overcome us. Our ideas of what we think is right and what we think is wrong. Our ideas of what's right and wrong is wrong. All of it. Are you with me? God, he has given forth his judgment. So he wants to come out of our mouth. He gives us the ability to speak out of his knowledge and out of his judgment, out of his realm of understanding. But that's a very difficult thing for people to do. The Lord just looks at us and says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. God wants you to be wealthy with the word of God where you're just walking around meditating on these things. Father, it's just amazing that whatever I want to ask you, you're going to do it. It, it is amazing that I, Lord, here's what I'm asking you right now. I want to be just so filled with joy I can't contain myself. Lord, show me the capacity of joy just before the moment of vaporization. <laughs> and then it begins to happen. Lord, show me, show me the overwhelming beauty of your love just before translation. I mean, just really go, what is the threshold? Well, you know, huh. One of the things that I'm looking forward to do in the not too distant future is having a special night of meetings, and that night of meetings is not sober. Because <laughs> uh, Paul said we're sober for your sake. Said so that, you know, ha, 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 hallelujah. We just got to be sober so we can, we can minister to you. So cause if, I come speaking to, in, to, if, I come spe if I come speaking in tongues, what should it What <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> what should it profit you? Ha, who mana ha ha. What should it profit you, lest I speak by revelation, by knowledge, by prophecy, and by doctrine? Doctrine is the teachings of the Holy Ghost. No, okay. Not, doctrine is not what you get because you can open up Strong's Exhaustive Concordance and do a word study and try to take and put some verses of Scripture together and string them along like a. I'm not going to talk about that, but nonetheless. Uh, or now it's even better. Now you basically can go. You can go uh, buy a sermon. Yeah, sure, you buy a sermon. <laughs> huh. Or you can just read, read a bunch of commentaries. But, hey, I think that would be great. I'd be, I think that would be wonderful if people just start studying the Word. I don't care how, what, what, you go, what you do to study the Word. Just start studying the Word. But the Holy Ghost, the, the Holy Ghost will bring forth teachings through us. The Holy Ghost teachings as doctrine. So Paul said, what should profit you if I couldn't speak in tongues lest I speak by knowledge, by revelation, by knowledge, by prophecy, by doctrine. And, you know, and there is a place, he said, we are sober, we are beside ourselves unto him, but we are sober for your sake. Have you ever found your threshold of being beside yourself? It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's the place of the open vision. It's the place that people don't understand. I mean, you know, <laughs> I told somebody, you know, well, Peter, you know, he was just, he was waiting on the Lord, just is not quite supper time, and, you know, and he fell into a trance. He wasn't the only one. Have you ever fallen into, have you ever fallen into a trance and had an open vision? Would you like to? Did you know it's available? That in these last days he gives dreams and vision? You know, God said, I, as he said, I, he said, surely as I live, this whole earth will be filled with my glory. And so he said, that's what he said in Numbers chapter 14 when Israel didn't really want him around, you know. They really didn't want him around. Moses wanted him around, but everybody else basically wanted to go back to Egypt because they were missing out on their garlics and leeks. Who could, who, what a, what a palate. What an appetite, garlics and leeks. Okay, but at any rate, Lord Jesus, help us. 
I'll take garlics and leeks over your manifest presence. That is messed up. That is <laughs> twisted. That is, uh, that is total. that is jacked up. That's bad. That's bad. Can't even, can you even imagine? And so he said, Prophet, he said, about you about the Honesty. He said, by his prophet, Bottles to Tepity. He said, by his prophet, Joel. He said, ha, it should come to pass in the last days, saith God. I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Everybody's going to prophesy. I'm not going to just put this upon the prophet and the priest. It's not going to just be upon the 70 and elect few people who I've allowed to approach under my presence. I'm going to cause my spirit to come upon all men everywhere. I'm going to so fill you up with my glory. You might be a woman who's been married five times living with a man who's not your husband. But if you're willing to receive the gift of God, there'll be a wellspring springing up on the side of you. The nabo will bubble up. The nabo. The nabo. The nabo is, means to bubble up. Nabo is a Hebrew word which means bubble up. And from it we derive the word navi, which is to prophesy. The bubble up turns into the prophecy. The praise and the thanksgiving is a platform for God the Holy Ghost. So you begin to pray with praise and with thanksgiving. We want people to practice. We want you to practice ecstatic joy. I know this is like, wow, this is bending, whoa, mind-blowing. We want you to practice ecstatic joy. But no, <laughs> no, the Bible says uh, joy unspeakable and full of glory. Ecstatic joy. That's it's joy unspeakable and full of glory. Ecstatic joy that belongs to a God dimension. There is a disposition that will change your ability to function in a different dimension. Peter says it in 2 Peter chapter 1. He said, you give yourself to this virtue. You give yourself, add to your faith, virtue to virtue, knowledge. And he goes through the list there. He says, you give yourself to, to having the excellence of character. God has given you everything that pertains to life and godliness because he calls you to glory and excellence of character. Glory and virtue, in other words. Glory, literally, and excellence of character, which is God's character. And he emphasizes in the next verse because he says, we've been given the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. He says, now add to, add to your faith virtue, to virtue, knowledge, to knowledge, temperance, temperance, godliness, godliness, brotherly kindness. And, and he says to us, he said, if we do these things, if we give ourselves to these things, making our calling and election sure, giving all diligence to making our calling and election sure, if we give ourselves to this disposition, this disposition of faith, this disposition of virtue, this dip, disposition of ooh, brava, godliness, huh, kindness, oh, br brotherly kindness, wouldn't that be an amazing thing if God's people were sanctified, separated, consecrated to walking in brotherly kindness? What a, another great awakening. You know, what, just to, it would be just to, to, if God's people come under the rule of the word of Christ Jesus and come under a, in, in place, come to a place where Holy Ghost is master and teaches you how to have different emotions and different feelings, the floodgates of heaven opens up, bust through your emotions and wash all that human stuff, all that disappointment, all that worldly stuff, all that ungodly stuff, all that demonic stuff away. All that unforgiveness, all that hurt, all that dysfunctionalness. Everybody comes from a dysfunctional home. From the perspective of heaven, you dysfunctional. Huh? Just accept it and get over it. Don't try to be prideful and act like you did it, because you did. You've been messed up bad, and God in His love and His mercy came and in Abba Sorene came and just took over. I want him to take over. Yes. I want him to yes. take over. I don't want myself to rule. I want him to take over. It's not the flesh ruling or a demonic nature or an Adamic nature or an old man. Everything's new in Jesus now. If you're in Christ, everything is new. Every, God said everything is new. And if you don't believe it, I'm going to tell you right now, you'll never have the miracle of it. He said, if you, be, any man being Christ is a new creation, everything is new. Behold, everything is new and everything that is old is gone passed away yes. and everything is of God yes. and I just got I, I my 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 I, I, you know you wake up in the morning you say father I just think I'm so full of you when you're saying father I think I'm so full of you Holy Spirit I think you I'm so full of you you don't have time to listen to some demons tell you how bad you are messed up you are sad you are sorry uh, all I got is the Holy Ghost telling me how happy I am 
how blessed I am. I'm blessed with all spiritual blessing in the heavenly realm. He's telling me all the giftings of God. How that he's going to open up my eyes and calm me to see things that has never been seen before. That I will doubtless, he gives me such boldness, I will doubtless come to vision and revelation. I mean, think about it, because I'm, you're going to have to, listen, you're going to have to get passionate about these things. Huh? Now, you want to move forward, you want to advance, get passionate. Huh? I, you know, it's just terrible. You know, you go play tennis with people, and they, you think they're playing badminton. <laughs> no, because they want to win. They don't want to, they don't want to advance. They want to try to win. Get passionate, man. Develop yourself. Get into the program. Stand up and begin to lift up your voice and shout to God. Not when everything's like it is right now. When the music's playing. It's a, a great opportunity. Nobody can hear you um, uh, making a mistake while you're prophesying. Well, if, if everybody's singing, they won't really hear you making any mistakes. If you're lifting up your voice, giving yourself over, you're declaring the good word of God. Because it's all found in something so true and so genuine and so real. It's not about impressing people. Right. <laughs> it's not, fear of man doesn't even exist in this realm. That's all got to, that's all got to be dealt with in the fires of the Holy Ghost and the fires of the moving of God in your life. What people think about you will keep you from ever really moving with God. That thing has got to be dealt with, and it is as you behold him. Hallelujah. Because now nothing even matters but you know, just You just love him. You worship him. You, for God desires truth in the inward parts and your hidden parts. He shall make you to know wisdom. And when you go asking for God for his wisdom, look at the results from Genesis chapter 1, 1 Revelation 22, 21. Of someone who gets wisdom, I will give you a mouth and I will give you a wisdom that no one will find fault with and that nobody can resist. Look at the results. He's, the righteous are made to understand the ways of God. And to speak after his judgments. I mean, think about all that Father has given to us when he put his word in our mouth. When he gave us a mouth to speak on his behalf. When he gave to us the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. And we begin to prophesy. We begin to be, as, as, as Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, oracles of God. Hallelujah. Living epistles. Written of God and read of men. So much of that's all about your demeanor. How it's about you, your, your face, your countenance can be like the countenance of the, of, the, of, the, of the king's seed. That's why Daniel and his three companions stood out above everybody else. They had a radiance to them. And you can see their commitment, their consecration. We don't want your food. We don't want your wine. We won't eat your meat. We won't eat any of your things sacrificed to idols. Just give us some oatmeal and spinach. And if you got any peas, we'll eat that with it. Oh, we can't give you that because then you're going to look like you haven't been getting a good diet. You say, we'll look better. We'll shine better. Watch our countenance. Just test us out. And they look better than everybody else that was eating it up, whining and dining. Papa has got a glow, a glory glow that he wants to bring back to the church. The Pentecostal movement used to have a glory glow when it was true and genuine before there became any money in it, before there came any fame in it, huh? before you could copyright a song and you know, become a part of the top ten or ten, you know, top 40 or whatever it is. When it was true, when it was genuine. Come on, man. God wants us, God wants us to come back. To, Father wants us to come back to a place where it's all about relationship with him. It's all about being excited, about being in his presence. Hallelujah. Get out of the religion. Get into the relationship. It's one of the two. And I've seen again and again. I've watched again and again where people get stuck in a ditch of religion. It's more, they got more religion than they got relationship. And now, you know, everybody says that. Now, everybody's talking about religion. Oh, we're religious. I mean, you're religious about being religious, you know. It's just gotten out of hand. And now, it's just the way Satan does it. He just confuses everybody. It's like, we don't even know, you know, what is religion, you know. Don't do nothing. <laughs> You know, you're religious if you got, you know, if you get joy. You're religious if you don't have it. You're religious if you preach the word. You're religious if you don't. Yeah. <laughs> hey, it's so easy. Relationship is easy. We know how to do relationship. It's the first thing we were taught. Our mother, as she drew us to her breast, taught us how to do relationship. We know how to do relationship better than anything else. It's been all messed up by the things that we've been involved in. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on. Get back into the fun. Get back into the fun. Listen to me now. Get out of the grind. Quit being, if you feel like, listen, if you feel like Samson, 
with your hair cut off, your eyes plucked out, going round and round every day, the, going round and round, grinding the meal for the Philistines, cry out to God for deliverance. Just get off of the merry-go-round. Get off the merry-go-round. You can immediately buy a one-way ticket and go into the hills in Nepal and spend the rest of your life preaching Jesus. It would be awesome. Anybody want to do that? You can do that. You can do that. The doors are open before you, uh, Ruth, <laughs> Ruth Anna. But we're going to have to ship some mules there because I don't want you riding around on a yak. There, is, there are ways to get mules there. Talk to Sabokanea, You see Ruth Anna riding around on a yak? Jesus. I think, the only, I think the only person that I know of that actually went through the hills preaching the gospel was a woman named Ruth. Ruth Heflin Ward. I believe she's the only one that got on a mule and went to the foothills as far as she could get. Because, I mean, that's, you spend your life, man. You spend your life. There's so many little villages, and they're hard to get to because of the terrain in the foothills of the Himalayas. Oh, and you know, listen, if we just get happy with Jesus, which is, it just, that's pretty, sounds pretty silly, doesn't it? I mean, how can you not be? I mean, goodness gracious. It's in his presence, is fullness of joy. At his right hand, his pleasures forevermore. You've got to let God teach you something else. See, your soul, your, your body has been taught how to ultimately yield to sickness and disease. Your soul has been taught how to be developed and, and stimulated around unholy emotions. Your spirit has been taught to commune with sin and iniquity. But how about we turn this thing around and say, Lord, thank you for strengthening me in my body, which is your temple that you're supposed to be glorified in, to stand against sickness and disease. There is a place, there is an old Pentecostal doctrine that dates back all the way to the land of Egypt. Old Pentecostal doctrine that was enunciated at Mount Sinai. It's called divine health, divine, living in divine health. Not getting sick at all, period, at all, anything. Um, there was a dear brother in the Pentecostal movement that died about, he died about 20 years ago, and he was an old man, and he would still, you know, when he would, he was, when he would travel around, or people would get to hear him minister, he, he, he never had a, he never even had a cavity, and he lived in divine health. One of the big things he ministered on was divine health. Not necessarily, I mean, he believed in divine healing, but he ministered on divine health. Living free from sickness and disease. None of these diseases. And the, the one thing about him is he never spoke anything ill of anyone ever. It was a bit in his mouth. So how difficult is it you? I mean, could you imagine how difficult it would be for you to never say anything bad about anyone? That would be a challenge of a monumental effort. I Find your threshold. For the Lord doesn't want you to speak anything evil or ill. Speak no guile with your lips. Keep your tongue from evil. And your lips that they speak no guile. Depart from evil. And pursue peace. Huh? For the Lord, eyes of the Lord upon the righteous and his ears are open unto their prayers. Now all of a sudden you're in a communion. Huh? See, there's spiritual laws of life. The spiritual laws of life that are in Christ Jesus has made me free from the laws of sin and death. Oh, we just want to say, oh, the law of the spirit of life. We want, to, we want to twist it all around so we don't have to deal with the reality of their spiritual laws. It literally says the spiritual laws of life in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Has made me free from the law of sin and death. People are living under the law of sin and death because they're not obeying spiritual laws of life. Hallelujah. You can ask my kids. There is only one thing that will cause me to go to get to begin to raise my voice and just be, get intense. 
if I feel that there's any spiritual laws being violated because I won't allow any spiritual laws to be, to be violated. The spiritual laws of life, we're not violating them because I'm not watching anybody get killed around here, hurt around here, sick around here, diseased around here. So he said, Lord, strengthen me in my soul. So the Holy Ghost has come to teach us in our emotions, in our passions. Teach me in my soul to love only you. To desire only holy emotions. To seek pleasure, the only those pleasures that are at your right hand. Do you know what that's going to do for you? That is going to be a defense against so much iniquity. Every gate, every window, as it were, of hell and iniquity is opened right now. There is nothing that, that, that enrages Father more than sexual immoralities. And Satan has opened up those windows now to our culture and generation wider than it's ever in any time. Never has Isaiah, the words of Isaiah, ever been able to be fulfilled on this level. Having eyes full of adultery, you cannot cease from sin. <laughs> you know, of course, if you believe what people are saying about God's grace, then Father's going to have to, it's all a lie to begin with. And then he'd have to go back and he'd have to repent for, to Adam for kicking him out of the paradise. And for the judgments that fell upon his head, he'd have to repent to Noah's generation and for wiping out the earth. He'd have to repent to Sodom and Gomorrah. That would be a long line. And he's not. He's not changing. He's the same as he was always. His judgments aren't, he, he's not learning. God's, how many of you know? God's not learning. He learned. It's done. He's not learning. He had it all put together 6,000 years ago. 60,000 years ago, 600,000 years ago, 600 million, 600 trillion, 600 quintillion years ago. And then on beyond that. It's always had it together. But if we begin to take spiritual laws of life and say, wait a minute. No, I just don't do that. I've got a boundary. I've got boundaries. I don't go, you know, the guy from the ISIL guy, ISIS guy said, I'm going to take this knife and I'm going to cut these two guys' heads off with this knife. And, you know, and everybody already knows he's going to do it because he's already done it. You know, that kind of wickedness, that, that kind of iniquity. I've got boundaries. I don't do that. Do you have boundaries? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Huh? You don't pull out a pocket knife to cut somebody's head off. You've got boundaries, don't you? Huh? Is those hard to do? Oh, just hard to do it. Yeah. Huh? And now, if you went in, there's some places in Iri and Jaya that people, their biggest problem is that they want to they cut you up, put you in a soup bowl, and eat you. And they're going to, they're big, they really have a difficult time not filing their teeth. It's a big temptation. You and I, we got boundaries on that. Huh? You got boundaries, right? Oh, I just can't help it. I got to have some elbow tonight. I've got to have some right shoulder, human right shoulder. I can't. I've got my taste has gotten, <laughs> hey, that's demonic, hey, yeah. that's demonic. Okay, so uh, they don't have problem with pornography. They don't have problem with, with fornication, really, in that in the way their culture works, because it's taboo. You don't kill. You're going you're gonna to be in a soup pot. <laughs> it's a restraint. Where are our restraints? Where are our thresholds? Where are our limits? Where are our bounds? Do you know them? Have you set limits? Have you set bounds? Everything that has order has limits and bounds that are set upon the way of the sea have limits and bounds. Have set upon the, the, the whole order of the universe is limits and bounds. Have you, do you have limits and bounds set upon you? Are the restraints of God's divine will upon your soul? See, these are things that are very important for us to deal with. Because he said when... He gave us the new nature that those limits and bounds were set upon us. He said when he gave us the new nature, he wrote his ways upon our heart and upon our mind that we may do them. I believe that people step into the reality of that miracle of this new covenant that where we would do his stat that we would keep his statutes and walk in his ways. That he described in the Old Testament and also described in the New Testament. But they've been perverted with words that have no life in them. They've been They've been, they have been spoiled by doctrines of devils and doctrines of men and not taught the limits and the boundaries coming under the rule of the Word of God. 
Christ Jesus is coming to rule with a rod of iron, and he's going to smash things. He's going to smash, even as a potter smashes a vessel of clay that is marred. He's going to smash things. I'm happy. Who can abide the day of his coming? For he is a refiner's fire and a fuller's soap. Most people don't even have a concept or a context by which to put the reality of who God, Christ Jesus, is in. They don't even have a context. He's the absolute sovereign God Almighty. He's the absolute, with all Satan's lies that would try to create such damnable thoughts and strongholds within the minds of men, intellectually and socially. God, the sovereign, almighty, the creator of the heavens and earth, by many witnesses, undeniable, infallible proof, is going to come and rule and reign as sovereign God Almighty. And he will not allow one iota of sin and wickedness in his realm. He is absolute otherness, which defines holiness, completely separateness. Far more than transcendent otherness. He's life. He's fullness of life. There's no death, no shadow and turning in him. And he demands it that way. He's not going to have it any other way. I was talking to the Lord one day and just said, Father, why have you let this go on for so long? Why have you let sin and iniquity go on for so long? And, and you know, and I've had so many different men of God. You know, my dad, as, as, a, you know, as a mentor and a minister in my life and other great men of God that were around him, talked to me about the things that Father was doing to purge sin out of the universe. But one day the Lord spoke to me and he simply said, I've allowed it to go on so that all creation for all time can see the consequence of the smallest amount of sin. That where the smallest little bit of sin that is allowed, it will ultimately lead to the place where men want to destroy God himself and want, want none of his rule and none of his life and none of his ways in them. It will ultimately, even Sodom and Gomorrah wasn't the fully ripe grapes. Uh, Revelation, when the Lord says, thrust in the sickle for the grapes are fully ripe, which is the full maturation and fruition. Sin can't get any worse. In other words, sin can't be worse. You know, my dad's generation, so many of those guys, the Lord let them go down into hell and see what was going on in hell when he raised up some great fiery evangelists. I would that you would step into a place of relationship with the Lord so he can begin to show you just how evil and sinister the demonic realm is so that you would rise up with such ferociousness and such authority in Christ Jesus against the demonic realm to give no place to to its, to its evil devices, to give no place to its sinister influence on the demonic realm. Sin, adultery, fornication, all of those things, the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, is far worse, in many respects, is far worse than the guy standing there with his knife going to cut off some people's heads. It's far worse. We don't understand how the Lord would create an eternity called hell. An eternal torture chamber is what it is. There's nothing less. Eternal torture chamber. It's a place of eternal death. Eternal agony of pain. I've seen people who died without Christ. And the pain and the torment that they died in. The hell, the, the moving of demon spirits in the room. That could not be, that could not be told you cannot have this body or this person for the claim, their claim upon that body and that person, that soul, that spirit was sealed by the person's will before they died. 
And, and that eternal death is far worse than this. So I said, how can, you, how can a loving God, how can, how can one who loves us so much have anything to do with such a terrible place? People don't realize this, that sin is more hideous to him than the thought of an eternal torture chamber is to us. We don't recognize how bad it is. We've been anesthetized. We've been conditioned. We've been, we were born in the quagmire of the filth. We were born with our, up to our eyebrows in the sewer of it. And don't know any different until we have an encounter with his love. Under the oppression of sorrow and death and sadness so intense that until we have an encounter with him, that was our first taste of joy. Woo, sweet. That was our first taste of love. That was our first taste of peace. I remember one of my first great events of peace. I was a little guy, and, and I had a bad dream. And my dad just went around casting out devils all over the place. And sometimes, you know, those things that just, you know, come try to harass, torment his kids and whatnot. But I had this terrible dream. I just thought for sure, you know. I mean, the devil was in the room, and he was about to take me away or something. But at any rate, so I was just a little guy and went in. To my mother I went in and said to my mom mom can I sleep with you and she said no but here take the Bible put it under your pillow and everything will be fine so I took the Bible and I stuck it under my pillow and I laid down on that I felt such a great peace I mean I slept under the pillow until I was probably 10 12 years old I mean I slept under with the Bible on a pillow for a long time I didn't sleep under the pillow you know you know what I mean Father's called us into his marvelous light. He's called us into his presence. He's given us access into his presence. He's called us into the holies of holies. The Old Testament could just tell us about the protocol to come into the, come into the gates, to come and stand in the courts. And God's now given us the protocol to come into the holies of holies. He's now given us an access into a realm of divine power and a glory. He's given us the authority of sonship. He's given us the ability as fully matured sons of Galatians chapter 4, verse 7. Say, you're not like a servant. You're not like a child that differs nothing from, no, no, does, differ, differs, uh, does not differ from a servant. But you're, you're a fully matured son. You've been given sonship as joint heirs with Christ and co inheritors with Christ and heirs of God. Have you discovered your threshold there? I know, I, I know, I know Satan's design. He's designed this world. To where that we're under pressure about 14 hours a day to make money so we can eat and have a house. And then we to get and then you get in that demonic oppression where everybody is telling you to do this, do that, and you're trying to make everybody happy and be a witness and be an example. What a hectic life. Huh? The cowboys used to say that's hellacious. Satan's designed this. How do you get out of that realm? How do you no longer participate with that realm? How do you sidestep all of that? How do you step over into realm now where it's all about what Father's doing? How do we begin to move in faith with Him to where we don't take thought for what we should eat or what we should wear? We don't come under the oppression of the thing. It isn't an issue to us about that, that praises of men and the success which men can give. Because you start trusting in God and he's going to give you a success that you could have never gained for yourself if you were the most genius person on the planet. He's going to take better care of you than you could ever take care of yourself. You think you take care of yourself pretty good. I'm telling you right now, Papa, take better care of you than you never even imagine. Just try it. But you know what? It's scary, isn't it? Scary. Scary. Because now you've got to step out and risk everything. Uh-oh. <laughs> I pray in Jesus' name that you become valiant. You begin to understand and let God define for you the threshold, which has no limits. <laughs> it's unlimited. The realms of all things are possible for them that would believe. The realms of nothing shall be impossible for you if you just believe. The, the, the authority of heaven. You know, there's there's one thing that I've set my heart to do and um, father's given us 
He's given us the passion to do it, so he gives us the faith to get it done. And that's to see business serve ministry instead of ministry serving business. To where business is about ministry. To where the money that's being made in business doesn't go to just boister the kingdom of darkness. And to satiate, to satiate the lust of men. But the money that's made goes into the kingdom of God. And the people, uh, in, uh, the people and all the re human resources and all the talents aren't lost to the kingdom of darkness to make money for the kingdom of darkness. But they're, they're able to be captured for the kingdom of God. I mean, we're just set on it. We're just set on it. It's going to happen. It's happening. It's happening. We're all day long. It's all day long. It's it's more than just about a testimony and being in a dark place. All day long. All day long. All day long. It, everything that's being made is going to advance. It's another crusade. It's another. It's another orphanage infrastructure. It's another church plant. It's you know another support of other ministry. It's another expansion of ministry. Anna and I, every time, anytime we go anywhere, then we go to a a hotel or to a resort, we just sit there and we, we, we just picture the whole thing belonging to the kingdom of God. The food that is served, the music that is heard, the people that work in there taking care of the rooms, cleaning the rooms, the prayer that's going over the mattresses. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Ha listen, I mean, just imagine that. The finances that are coming in, the profitability that's being made from it, how it's now then funneled into the kingdom of God. Listen, what are you doing with your imagination? You know what I'm saying? What are you doing with, better than that, what are you doing with your faith realm? What are you doing with your vision realm? Because a vision realm is a far better realm than imagination. Unfortunately, people live by imagination instead of the Word of God. And vision don't come out of imagination. Dreams come out of, fantastical dreams come out of imagination. Out of vision, we, what we get is we get revelation. Out of living by the Word of God, we get vision. Out of imagination, you get fantastical dreams. Out of living out of the Word of God, you get vision. Huh? That vision is that vision is a real genuine dream from heaven. And a dream is something that you participate and partake of every day. And to have it and to participate with it and to understand the realms, hallelujah, of this spiritual blessing and this authority that has been given to us, we obey spiritual laws of life and we say, I know where the blessing of God is. I know that all these other things can bring a curse upon me, that it will stop the flow of God's divine provision. I mean, we've been going at it for a long time. I haven't just talked about, I started talking about this, you know, last year. We've had some bumps in the road along the way. We've had the thief come, try to kill, steal, and destroy. But you know what? Father just, Father just fitting us for the battle, preparing us unto the work. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, living God. Thank you, living God. Praise your holy name. Praise your holy name, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Just lift your hands towards heaven. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I command every mind-blinding spirit that would keep you from seeing and understanding the things as they really are to be broken from off of you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I speak into your life the ability to set restraints upon your life and boundaries upon your life according to the restraint and the boundary which God has commanded that even the waves obey, that the sun and the moon obey, that every living thing upon the face of the earth that is in the heavens above and beneath the earth obey. But God has given you and I a will to choose of whether or not we will come as servants to those limits and to those boundaries that God has set to understand the unlimited capacity that he has given. In the name of Jesus, I command you in Christ Jesus' name to uh, discover your threshold, to discover the boundless realms of heaven that are made available to you as the Holy Spirit would take you and minister to you an entrance into the abundance of the kingdom of God, into the everlasting kingdom of the dear Son, a realm of divine power and grace, a realm of the gifts of the Spirit and the authority to command and God will do it. To understand those words command ye me, saith God.
Oh, Shekina Malakaya. Shekina Malakaya. To understand the sin and iniquity, that the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eye and the, and the pride of life is the cursed thing. And if you touch the cursed thing, all it's going to be is death and destruction, limitation and agony, pain and sorrow. And that you will have the wisdom that comes from above. The wisdom of the Father. The insight of Almighty God. To keep yourself over in this place where you submit yourself to the Holy Spirit. That you yield your body, your, mem your being as members, as weapons of righteousness unto God. You come under the rule of Christ Jesus. You come under the authority and the mandate of the Almighty God, the Father of all. No longer to choose your own way to ultimately just simply be led astray by the craft of men and of demons. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I speak life into you. I speak wisdom and insight into you. Grab a hold of your place in God and begin to move and flow and function there. Hallelujah. Begin to enjoy joy. Begin to enjoy love. Begin to enjoy peace. Ha! Let sorrow be broken off. Let sorrow and sadness flee away. Find the place of the redeemed. Find the place of a wellspring. Find the place of rivers flowing. Inexhaustible. Unstoppable. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I command your heart to obey me. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Disease and affliction will no longer rule over you in any way. Will not rule your body in any way. Have no influence on your body. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Geneva, I want you to just set that up. I know there may be some of you that you might have to go a little bit early. I don't know. If you do, you can, you can feel free to do so, but I'm going to go ahead. What I want to do is I want to serve communion here. And, you know, I was at the other church plant at, when the, the, the first of the year came, and I haven't actually been able to serve communion here in the church in this new year, 2015. And I've been wanting to do it. I, I thought I was going to do it the other night. When my father was here, and it just things just didn't work out for me to get to do it. <laughs> but boy, the, the glory was here. And it what's so important to me is for Pete, you're, you're welcome to help. You can help. Anybody, you can help. Daniel, you can help. Please. What's so important to me is that everybody begins to appreciate um, the, the value of what communion means. It's living by the very body and blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. It talks to us about the way that we live, not a ritual, not an activity that we participate with in the sense of, of communion. This is, this is so holy to me. It's so sacred. It's so sacred. It's so holy to me that I, I, I've always just done it myself. I just, I get, I get nervous over it kind of thing. I get really just, now what's going on? Now how are you doing it? Now how are you handling it? Now what's on your heart? Now what you're thinking? And Paul was that way about it. You know, we see in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, he says, let everybody examine himself. He said, as I've received from the Lord, I've received something from the Lord. I've received something that belongs to a realm of authority in Christ Jesus as a minister of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so Paul said, as I received it from the Lord, even so I give it unto you. 
that on the night that Jesus was betray betrayed, he took bread and he broke it and said, this is my body, take and eat it. And after that they had supped, he took the cup and he said, this is the new covenant in my blood which is given to you for the erasing, erasing removal, remission, doing away, esponging, eliminating sin. Too many people take the body and the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and say they still have sin, that I'm a sinner. No, no, no. When you have, com when you have this wonderful communion of his love, wherein we are born again, he takes all the sin away, gives you, he gives you his righteousness, his gift of righteousness, he makes you a saint. You get a miracle induction in the heaven where you go from a sinner to being a saint. I've been inducted into sainthood by the miracle of the Lord Jesus Christ when I was born again. Men might not think I'm a saint, but God thinks I'm one. He said, I'm one. I am one. Am, I am said I am, so I am. I don't care what anybody else says. What he says, I'm under his rule. I'm under the rule of his word. Everybody else is wrong. Only God's right. Everybody else is wrong. So don't argue. Everyone's wrong but the Lord. Everything he said about us. He never, Christ Jesus never called us a sinner after that we were born again. Neither did Paul or anyone else in the word. Called us a saint. Called us the righteous ones. Hallelujah. Oh, Stakaya. That's the covenant. And, and, and what we do in here is I, I, I'm going to show you how to live. I'm living by, I'm living by redemption. I'm living by his, I'm, he gave me his, he, he said, he said he gave me his body to eat. It's meat indeed. He said, this is the true man. In other words, this is the substance, relationship with me, abiding in me. Because this is where he brings us to. When you look at it in John chapter 6, this is what he brings us to. He said, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no life in you. If you dwell in me, and that's where he brought it to, you have eternal life in you. And eating the, in this, the, the communion, setting up the communion, setting up the fellowship. Setting up the oneness. Just living in it. I used to put the 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 bread I, I you know I don't like matzah anymore <laughs> recently I found recently I found because I had to we did tortillas and that was much more like flesh <laughs> I thought it was much more like manna I'm like this works it's chewier it's unleavened Our fellowship with the Lord Jesus is nothing but, that, that's good for right now. 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 I mean, the price of my fellowship is the price of my communion. That's why I get, that's why, I'm, that's why I'm so stunned when people aren't excited in praise and worship. That's why I'm bewildered why people can live, that many people that say they know God can live as they do. He gave me his body for my food and he gave me his blood for my drink. My ability to know God is all at the expense of such great sacrifice on his part that he was willing to show such love. All my fellowship is about, all my fellowship with God is about Jesus, not about me. It's about Jesus. I'm so excited about it. I didn't, I, I didn't earn one bite of that bread or one sip of that drink. I, did, I was not worthy of nor could ever attain to any part of that which he supplied to me. 
Once you get past needing to attain to it, you're liberated to receive it all and to walk in the boldness of it and have all confidence to come on in. And it becomes so meaningful, meaningful to you. There can't be leaven in it. There can't be, there can't be alcohol in it. To me, that's a, that, is, that is a declaration of the abomination. Because it's leaven. It's leaven. You can't have the Passover with leaven. You know, people try to tell me Jesus drank wine. He didn't have leaven. They said, oh, he was a wine bibber and a glutton. You believe that? You believe that he was a glutton, that he overate? You know what glutton meant in the Greek society? You overate, you went outside, you threw up, and then you come back in and eat again. And you do that as many times as you can handle it. That's a glutton. Jesus wasn't a glutton, neither was he a wine bibber. Just people have no idea of the culture of holiness. They have no idea of the culture of the kingdom. They have no idea of the, uh, of the culture of those which we would call the orthodox. The separated ones. And so we have no, no you know, we don't have, we don't, I, don't, I don't like serving any kind of bread or drink with any kind of leaven at all. Because the testimony is about us having a fellowship with no leaven. The leaven of sin. Don't, don't, don't take and eat tonight of the, of the body and the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ with sin and going on in your life. Don't come up. It's okay. We love you. You don't have to come up. We don't want to embarrass anyone. Don't come up. If you've got plans on continuing on in sin, don't do it. Because Paul said you eat and drink damnation to your soul. Don't do that. Don't do that. He said many people eat and drink unworthily. Because you can eat and drink unworthily. you you got to be worthy of this. And he's the one who makes us worthy. And for this cause, many people are sick and can't get healed. One time I had a preacher say to me, why don't everybody get healed? I said, because some people took communion wrong. I mean, there's a, long, there's a long risk of things that go on in that realm. But I, you know, I, communion to me, it's about, it's, a, it's about a declaration of liberation. It's about a declaration of purity and having received the gift of God and now living by Christ Jesus. Him living in me and I'm living in Him. It's about a fellowship that hasn't got leaven in it. It's about... It's about a oneness with Him. It's about a communion with the community of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's about a oneness with one another. You can't have unforgiveness in your heart and have communion. You can't have backbiting in your life and have communion. You can't have, you can't have those things going on in your life and have communion. And the reality of it is, the Lord has made it really simple for us to be able to have communion. Confess your sins and He'll forgive you. And cleanse you from all unrighteousness and immediately you get to have communion. And now you take the elements to describe, here's how I got cleansed. Here's how I got, If you're sick in your body tonight, understand that the first Passover was really the first testimony of communion. And that night they ate the lamb, they got the lamb in them, and there was no one sick or feeble among them. There's no reason for us to be sick and feeble. Old Testament, no one's sick and feeble. New Testament, people are sick and feeble. It's true. Old Testament, no sick and feeble one among them. New Testament, be careful how you eat this. Be careful what you do with this. Because otherwise you're going to get sick and feeble. Does there need... He loves us so much. But does there need to be a reverence and a holy fear? Yeah. Because God's not playing no games. He's not high-fiving iniquity. And he's not high-fiving sin. And he, and, he has, and he has. God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. But it, it takes being willing to come into a fellowship with him. To where that there will be relationship love. Jesus said, if you love me, you'll obey me. He said, if you keep my commandments, the things that I've commissioned you to do, that I've commanded you to do. He said, then... My Father will love you. Somebody says, time out. Wait a minute. I thought God already loved us. God loves the world. He already shut his hand to all the world. His arms to all the world. He said, I would that all men be saved. I would that no man perish. 
but there's not a fellowship love until our lives are transformed by the power of God and we're willing to come in to a place of coming under His authority, living His life, wanting to be taught His ways. I'm telling you, there's revival. Tim? There is a mandate for a move of God in your life. Father demands that you get so hid in His glory that nobody's approval is any, means anything to you. Nothing. When you're hidden away in God, you know what you can do then? You can speak as an oracle of God and men can't influence you. Their gift can't influence you. Their appearance can't influence you. Their wishes can't influence you. Their will can't influence you. The culture, the atmosphere can't influence you. You hear me now. Because the Lord has an opportunity. I'm just waiting on the Lord here. He has an opportunity for you to function in this great outpouring of the Spirit that He wants to bring. Because I can see it. And I can see the issues. And I can see the problems too. And the beautiful thing is, Father sees them. You know what? He loves us. And He says, you know what He says? Be different. And I empower you to be different. Every, people, want, people want God's approval upon their life. His confirmation of who they are. No. Be conformed to the image of Christ. That's all Father has approved. And that's all he's confirmed. He said, no, no, no. I want you to confirm me. I'm not confirming you. Father's made a way for us to get out of everything that has made us different than him. So that we can be one with him. Live by his body. Live by his blood. I live by his blood. I live by his blood all day long. I live by his blood. How can anybody convince me of sin? I live by his blood. Who can lay any charge to God's elect? I live by his blood. Huh? How can the enemy in any way separate me from this wonderful love or in, in, in any way intimidate me or try to impinge upon my boldness and God I live by his blood he lives in me I live in him eating the flesh and drinking blood says I live by him I dwell in him and he dwells in me hallelujah because it represents the lamb taking eating the lamb what do you do when you eat the lamb Why, where's the lamb at now inside you it's just a, it's just a declaration that the lamb is inside me just, just a declaration that all my inward parts have been washed in the blood. Hallelujah. That I live by Him. Fushala. So I expect everybody to get healed tonight. I expect sickness and disease to part out of your body. But more than that, I expect everybody in here to be strengthened by the Spirit in their inner being so that no sin nor iniquity could ever get in. Yeah. Satan cannot trespass against the blood. Where the blood is applied. How could Satan access your heart and your emotions should you live in the limits and the bounds and the restraints of God's Word and come under the rule of Jesus Christ, the Word, and the authority of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Holiness. Tonight, God wants to heal Broken, upside down, messed up affections and heartaches. Somebody hurt me a thousand years ago. Might as well have been a thousand years ago. Somebody said something bad to me ten thousand years ago. When will you get over it? My, do you ever admire yourself? Oh, do you ever so greatly esteem yourself that you would still be concerned about something that someone said last week I had people start talking to me about things that you think well it just happened yesterday it happened 30 years ago you gotta be kidding me do you mind if I tell you something you're weird that's why a lot of people don't come to for counseling don't come to me for counseling
I figure if you know the truth, the truth will liberate you. <laughs> if you can take it. I'm going to deal with some things in the spirit here, okay? So don't get too freaked out. Just, I just want you to, I just want you to spend some time just pouring out your love and affection upon him. And it's really just saying, Lord, you're just amazing. I have never experienced the manifest presence of the Lord complaining. I have never experienced the manifest uh, presence of the Lord feeling bad about myself. I have never experienced the manifest presence of the Lord feeling bad about my situation. Never. And I know no one who has. But I have instantly, in a terrible situation, found myself giving thanks to the Lord immediately. Faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please Father. They that come to Him must believe that He is. That He exists. That He's here right now. That He's God. And if He's God, He commands everything. If He's God, He controls everything. <laughs> Think about that. But as we just give thanks and tell them that we love them. And women, how many of you like to hear your husband tell you, tell you that he loves you? Only my wife. <laughs> Guys, you got some work to do. Maybe my microphone wasn't up. Children, how many of you love to hear your parents tell you that they love you? You know how you got that? It belonged to the nature of the Father. The Father says, this is the Son that I love, that I'm so pleased in. Hear Him. That's Father. And how about Father? He loves hearing us tell Him. That we love him. I know a friend of mine may be watching right now. He used to he used to get his lunch break and he'd get down in the dirt and he'd just say, Lord Jesus, I love you. He'd do it every day. He did it every day of his every day of his life. Walking in and out with the Lord for many years. Many years. 25, 30 years. One day he heard the Lord say, I love you. And when that happens, everything changes. One phrase, I love you. Everything changes. Now there's a miracle ministry, signs and wonders and gifts of healing. Just all I hear, just all one audible voice, one utterance from heaven. And Father, wants you and I to step in the download of all the fullness of his glory. And the first thing you got to do is quit feeling bad about yourself. And the blood is supposed to take care of that tonight. The blood should be able to take care of you not feeling bad about yourself no more. <laughs> it's God's approval of what Jesus has done for us. Daniel, come forth this up for me. I need some more. I want everybody over here on this side over here. I want you to come. I'm going to give you the communion. Just come over here. Just kind of, I don't know how you're going to do this. Kind of, kind of swing out this way and back that way. Just kind of do a U for me. There you go. Jesus said, Moses didn't give you the manna. Moses didn't give you the true manna. Because your fathers died in the wilderness. He said, but if anybody eat this bread, if anybody partake of my life, if anybody will receive my life, he lives forever. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Bless. Love you, baby.
Yeah, you should you should pass by. Or otherwise, you're going to have to get in line again, baby. <laughs> Be blessed, my dear brother. Be blessed. And also, tortillas don't flake all over the floor. <laughs> so you got that? Pardon? You may have salt with the sacrifice. My baby sister. Te casa no guía que ana na exe. Se cono mas se que ana mas. Mambrasete. Mambrusete ribetis. There's a fountain, the healing streams never shall run dry. You be blessed. Jesus, be blessed. I want you to feel good about yourself for the rest of eternity. Bless you, dear. It's so good to see you here. Bless you. Bless you. Be blessed. Be blessed. Help her. You have to take. If this is not a seed, not on Bakin that I say. In Jesus' name, I command you to be healed. I command healing come in your body in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, this very night. In Jesus' name, do you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. Stand right here. Just a minute. This affliction goes out of your body. In Jesus' name. This thing can't grab a hold of your emotions, your heart, or your body. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Everything of the past broken off of you in Jesus' name. Seek that the next see. This is tiny. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Be blessed. Be blessed. Be blessed. In the name of Jesus. Father, even as you opened up the eyes of the disciples at the breaking of bread so that they could behold you and see who you really are in your resurrected glory. Father, I pray in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Daxikina Akseya. Be blessed. 
Stuart, love you, buddy. Bless. Make up such a mess over here. Profici on a mess. We bless. <laughs> we bless. 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 How you doing over there? We bless. This section. We don't have a center section anymore. Exutana esipaya tust. Exutana esiparo sicana. Exutana usiberetisia canamaya. Ora masa etesielo. This is a very crumbly matza. Be blessed. Be blessed. Be blessed, K. Be blessed. Yeah, if a man prophesy with his head covered, he dishonors his head. Pray or prophesy with his head covered, he dishonors his head. Oh, you got a pretty big shave there. I see why you covered that up. I just want you to bless your heart. Sorry about that. It's really calm and crumbly and lots of stuff. Sealed up. Okay, be sealed up. Caleb, be sealed up. Thank you, man. Sutana Isikina of Sutea. Sutana Isibiki as you told me. Lay it all down <laughs> at the feet of a master. Cast all your cares upon him. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Look at me. Father, we thank you for your blessing. In your servant Dwayne's life and in his house. Known as things. Thank you, Father, for a great breakthrough and for strengthening him. To be able to stand and watch it happen. Amen. Be blessed, my brother. Be blessed. Be blessed. Be blessed. Be blessed. Keeps, the thought keeps coming to me. Who's vacuuming this up tonight? Be blessed. Be blessed. Be blessed. How are you doing? Love you. Hallelujah. Naxia kina moksaya. Exfilo to payabi. <laughs> How are you? I'm doing good. What's your name? Vincent? Pleasure to meet you, Vincent. Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior, Master and Ruler. 
That's awesome. <laughs> hey, buddy. How are you doing? <laughs> well, I'm so blessed to be, have you back here, see you back here. Listen to me. Let me just tell you something. You got more than one chance. You hear me? The Lord's not going to let go of you. Okay? You just put your trust in Him. Okay? We love you very much. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm just glad you're still alive. Hey, Faith, how are you doing? We here have some of the Lord's body. She got all the questions right last time, so I'm going to figure I won't ask her again. Love you, buddy. Be blessed. Be blessed. Be blessed. Be blessed, my dear friend, Joe. Amen. Be blessed. Be blessed. Be blessed. Be blessed. Hey, Robin, how are you doing? You're the guy going, how are you getting cracky? You, know? you gotta wait. Love you. Be blessed. So wait, you can go ahead and reach out and take it. It's like the gift of life. You've got to reach out and take it. It's provided. Jesus, oh Jesus, oh Jesus. Yeah. What's so going on with Sue and Jado? This is pretty much what we look like before the Father, you know. He sees the bread and the blood. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. On the, this, is so, this is so radical and it's so perfect that the Lord said it this way. On the night that he was betrayed... What love? And nothing messing with his love. Nothing messing with his love. Don't let anything, don't let anything mess with his love in your life. Nothing's messing with his love. On the night that he was betrayed, he took bread and he broke it. He said, this is my body which is broken for you. He bore our sins in his own body on the tree that we now being dead to sin might live unto righteousness by whose wound we were healed. Lord, we thank you so much for your broken body. And there's not enough words to express it. There's not enough songs to sing about it. There's not enough joy and rejoicing to display the kind of thanksgiving and gratitude that we should have. Lord, all we can say is thank you. And Father, I pray tonight in Jesus' name that every person in here will live in this boldness and live in this fellowship. And this will be all their worthiness. And this will be all their righteousness. And this will there be their, their ability to... Stand with their head held high in your presence, just thanking you and rejoicing in you, Christ Jesus. What once was the bread of affliction, it is now the bread of liberation. And we want you to discern the body of Christ tonight. We want you to discern his body, what his body did for you. You liberated and said, just go ahead. Amen. And just show that confidence as you partake of that liberation. Amen. And live by it. It's a commitment we live in by it. Lord Jesus, thank you for your body.
Jesus Christ is in me. Say, Jesus Christ is in me. Christ Jesus is in me. Christ Jesus is in me. He lives in me. This is my confidence of glory. This is the faith. Christ was Jesus was born. He was born in me by the miracle of salvation. Oh, but of Sanita. He came to live on the inside of me. By the miracle of salvation. Somebody said, What do you mean Christ Jesus is born in me? It's a new man. New man. Born again. And as a newborn babe, this new man, which lives and has its being and meaning in Christ Jesus. He's come to dwell in our lives by the Spirit that He has given unto us. It's amazing. And then He takes it to that level when He says, And my Father and I will come and make our dwelling on the inside of you. So that we can confidently say tonight and, and become aware of this and understand the glory of it and the value of it and the meaning of it and the, the unlimited measure of it. That the Holy Spirit, the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ has come to make their dwelling on the inside of us. And it is, it's almost more than we can say with words, but it is as though... The holies of holies was moved from the temple into our very inner man. And if you can wake up with this in the morning. If you can wake up with the faith of it. And you prophesy. This word of faith over your life. And let his word be in your heart and in your mouth. This word of faith. This word of life. You prophesy these things concerning the word of Christ and let his word be in you richly and, uh, and agree with Father on that which he has spoken and that which he has done. I'm promising you, you're going to step into a whole other dimension of interaction with the one who redeemed you and saved you by his grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And after that they had eaten, he took the cup and he said, this is the new covenant. This is the new covenant. This is the New Testament. This is the whole new dimension of relationship. This is it. Which is given to you to wash away your sins. Tonight, I take this cup recognizing that all my sins have been washed away. I'm redeemed. And my garments are whiter than snow. The Lord says, though your sin be as crimson. Though they be as scarlet. A dye that cannot be removed. A double red dye stained with the blood of sin and iniquity and offense against God. Yet I shall make them white like wool, white like snow. Tonight, I want you to grab a hold of faith in Christ Jesus where you walk around seeing yourself redeemed. Saying, I know my Redeemer lives, and he's standing on the inside of me right now. Yeah. I mean, taking it up a level from where Job had it, okay? I know my Redeemer lives, and he's standing on the inside of me right now. Hallelujah. He's living. In, he liveth. He liveth in me. In me, he liveth in me. That's an old Pentecostal song. He liveth. My God, he liveth in me. My, if we just start prophesying of ourselves, we'll, we'll, God, the glory of God, the Son, the Holy Ghost will eclipse everything that's been bothering us about you and me. Everything that uh, the self realm has tried to intimidate us with won't matter anymore. For he liveth. He liveth. My God, he liveth in me. <laughs> Hallelujah. And that's the only way that song's supposed to be sung. That's supposed to be he liveth. He liveth. Amen. Because you can't say that like that. You're right. You with me? Amen. 
Kurababasataya. Halabosaderini. You know, tonight, another thing is, we're rehearsing. Because we're going to drink it with him anew in the kingdom. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. While the tribulation is going on, the marriage supper of the Lamb is going on in heaven. And it's where we sit down and we have communion with him. He said, I will drink it from, no, from, no more, from this time no more until I drink it anew with you. And the kingdom. Marriage supper of the Lamb. Just before we mount up on horses. Angels know how to move around in the earth. Did you notice that in Zechariah? They got some great horses too. We mount up and we come to execute God's judgments in the earth. Lord Jesus, thank you for your blood. You are all our righteousness. We want no other. We thank you that you have cleansed us, that you've washed us. We recognize tonight that your blood is drink indeed. It gives us everything that we need in order to live eternally. In order to live in your life. Because that's really what the Lord's saying. When you eat my flesh and you drink my blood, you have my life in you. It's a declaration, you have my life in you. That you dwell in me and I'm dwelling in you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. For, this is not no bitter cup. It ain't going to be no sour old wine. Huh? You got you to gotta practically become demon possessed to think wine tastes good. This is the sweet, glorious <laughs> cup. Hallelujah. <laughs> of rejoicing. Amen. Mm -mm -mm. That's sweet. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> hey, I wonder, I wonder who in this place could get so could get more full of joy than anybody else. I I, I believe that I actually practice this probably more than you guys. I bet I could get more staggering joyful. <laughs> I who that shape on Who razayete? Ha! I mean, do you know the fellowship for real? Do you know the mosadea? Do you know my Do you know the flow of heaven, the river of his expressions, of his divine emotions? Do you know how to yield yourself? Just like you drink, just like you eat. Father wants to teach you. And you know, we're going to be, we're going, we're going <laughs> to. <laughs> Hallelujah. Money, he should come to my. Hallelujah. May not sail. I pray that every person in this place will come to know how wonderful it is to be exceedingly joyful so that you can rejoice forevermore and obey God. Here's what God commands you to do. Rejoice evermore. <laughs> huh? Huh? To rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. To walk in love. Even as he loved us. Not out of a ritual. Not out of, not out of a law. But out of a divine empowerment. Where God overwhelms us with his glory so much. Oh, if you just reach out for this. If you'll grab a hold of this. If you'll value it more than anything else. 
because it's riches, it's true riches, it's the wealth, it's the wealth that every person on this planet desires to have. People would give all the money that they have if they could really believe that, it would, that as a result they could live in this joy and this peace. And Father gives it to us for free. And we want you to experiment with it. We want you to experiment. <laughs> we want you to experiment. We want you to learn how to just say, we want you to learn how to just say, Holy Spirit, fill me with your joy. And immediately get filled up. And then, 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 and then. If you practice this, what's going to happen? One time, the Lord will just overtake you with joy in bad situations. One time, one time, my wife and I got some, some just, I mean, absolutely terrible, devastating news. And when we grabbed a hold of the envelope that had the terrible, terrible, devastation, the devastating news that we didn't even know was terrible, devastating news, we got hit with a joy. We're just, we're just caught up in heaven, just, just, just joy and people full of glory. It was amazing. We're in our, we're in our car. We're just, and I opened up our Reddit, and I got hit even more intensely with the joy. It's a beautiful thing how he keeps us. We're kept by the power of God. To really experience that is an entirely new realm. And we want everybody to understand this wonderful place of living in God. The Holy Spirit, you give yourself to this flow of the Holy Ghost tongues, and what will happen, you know, Father will prepare you and strengthen you for every situation that you're ever going to face. If, if I get ready to go into some kind of temptation, some kind of trying situation, some kind of enemy setup or whatever, the Holy Ghost will just get activated on the side of me and I'll start praying in, in the Spirit. It will just take over. It doesn't matter, you know, you know what I'm saying. It's just, it's, it's an urgency. It's an unction from heaven. And I know it's getting ready to go down. So I, he's building me up. He's come to comfort me, strengthen me, build me up. He wants to comfort you, strengthen you, build you up. You know, it's wonderful to be around the Holy Ghost. He's not condemning you. Isn't that beautiful? He's not. He's, he's building up. He's building up. He's giving you the confidence. He's giving you divine ability. He, he, he's giving you the capacity to shine. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Will everybody stand with me? <laughs> Hallelujah. How my name just... Look around right now. Look around and see if there's anybody you don't like. <laughs> uh, hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. She kind of may She kind of may tell you. Find a bunch of people, hug them, tell them that you love them, bless them in Jesus' name. If there's anybody who needs prayer for anything, come, we'll pray with you and for you. I know the Lord will touch you. See, Casto de Montadea. See, Lomo Cayes. Have a day, Rene. A Romo Mosata Radea proposed. Satana and Emea should take a day. Oh, great is the great is his love. A great and mighty is his name. Oh, how great is his love for me. <laughs> Woo. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes, dear. What's up? What do you want prayer for? Okay.
I on? Am I on now? Can you hear me now? Have I been off this whole time? No wonder. <laughs> no. <laughs> no wonder. It seems like nobody can hear me. <laughs> anybody, anybody, have a, anybody have a shoulder problem? Anybody got a problem in their, an arm problem? Not a shoulder problem. Problem in their, in their left arm. What's up, man? What's happening? What's happening? Huh? What? Huh? And you just be healed right now in Jesus' name. No sickness comes on your body. No, no, no sickness. No sickness comes on your body. No, in the name of Jesus. You're practicing living the rest of your life in divine health. You're one of the candidates for no sickness. None. Sickness has no hold on Dominique. She's living in heavenly places. Crushed his head at Calvary. She's living in heavenly places. Amen. Are you doing good? Are you doing good? Did I hear you hacking? You're just re you're in recovery. Quick recovery in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus. <laughs> 